Hello and welcome everyone to IT Pro Guide. Mahmoud Niaz with you. We are watching the second video of Azure Information Protection video series. In this video, we are going to start with uh, Azure Information Protection and its core components that comes in the solution. And also, we will little bit we will talk about the uh, information protection challenges that exist today and how Azure Information Protection going to address those challenges. And also you will learn the dependencies and also the prerequisites that is required in order to use this solution in your organization. So before we dive into the functionalities and features of Azure Information Protection, I think it is important to understand what the solution is in the first place. So Azure Information Protection is a cloud-based solution. If you ever had a chance to manage AD RMS, right management system, you know it's a pretty complicated solution with uh, a lot of moving parts. So Azure Information Protection is the successor in some ways to AD RMS, the fact that Microsoft has taken over the management of underlying infrastructure. Azure Information Protection means classification. Classification of data is very, very important because the sensitivity of a document is, is different. It could be something which is for general consumption. It could be something for internal use only. And it is important because the end users who are going to use these documents need to be aware about the sensitivity of the document so that they can use it appropriately. So the classification of the document with labels are very important and also based upon this classification you may want to apply some kind of protection level. For example, if it is a top secret file then you need to protect it from sending those documents outside your organization. The way to apply classification is through labels. So labels uh, contains uh, classification information within the Azure Information Protection and based upon these labels your document get protected. The way these labels are available to the end users are through policies. So once you create a label you're going to add this into the policies and these policies are assigned to the users and now they have access to those labels. Next is about the conditions. So conditions is nothing which helps you to automatically classify and put labels for your documents based upon the uh, identifiers inside the document. So a label going to look up the document uh, for any uh, conditions that mentioned in the policy. If it found any matched phrases then it's going to automatically uh, put a label and based upon that classification your document get protected. So we can say Azure Information Protection is a cloud-based service offer classification for your documents and the, based upon that classification you assign labels to your document and based upon the labels your file get protected because every file have different sensitivity level. And also Azure Information Protection offers you to automate the classification based upon the conditions that you have in your policies. In order to understand the importance of Azure Information Protection, I think it's good to go through the information protection challenges that today organization faces. So to understand that, I would like to define the data in your organization into two types. That is structured data and unstructured data. So structured data are the data that you centrally manage. For example, your Oracle database or your CCTV data. Those you are centrally managed and you dynamically transfer to the end users. So you have a complete control of the data and you know how many instances of data you have in your organization. So such kind of data are relatively simple to protect. The other type of data in your organization is unstructured data. Data is like your word files, documents, Excel, your email. It is distributed between the users and very rarely you store it in a file server but it also frequently copied uh, to users. So you don't know the individual existence of the file. You may have multiple copies. Sometimes people upload to their Gmail also uh, as a second level of protection for the users. So it is difficult to protect uh, uh, this kind of data because when, whenever we want to protect this kind of data, as I said before, the sensitivity of the data are different. Not all the documents need to be protected. It could be something for general consumption. It could be something for internal uses. So you need to classify and based upon the classification or the sensitivity of the file, you need to protect this information. So this is the biggest challenge that today organization face when it comes to information protection. Next is about protecting an information that you shared outside. So for example, you have Active Directory in your organization and you have a file server. So you control the access of your files using the Active Directory authentication 
So only the people allotted or authenticated can access that uh, information. And today the mobile workforces are increasing so people access their files outside your organization like let's say coffee shop or airport. In that case also using managed device uh, applications you can protect your information, your corporate information up to some level. But what about the information that you share outside your organization? For example, you send an email to a Gmail or you send someone an Excel sheet and uh, you lost the control of that document. You don't have any more any access to that file and you don't know what he's going to do with that file. He may forward that document to someone else and that is not under your control also. So this is the biggest challenge that exists today in organization. So as your information protection going to solve this issue by classifying these documents. So as your information protection offer two methods to classify the file. One is manual classification and the other one is automated classification. So based upon the classification, the file get a label and based upon the label, the file get protected or if it is a general consumption file, then it gonna leave unprotected. And then if you share this file, this file get encrypted with Azure cloud key or you can have your own key. And once the file get encrypted, you share it, you have complete control over the file. You can revoke the file, you can monitor the file, you can see who are all accessing those files. So this gives a complete control over the file even it is outside your perimeter, even it is after your firewall, you get a complete control of your information. At the same time, the big headache data classification is also taken over by Azure Information Protection. Now it's time to look at the life cycle of Azure Information Protection. Every data born in your organization is identified, classified and labeled. So based on the sensitivity of the document, the data get classified and it get assigned with a label and that label may protect the document if it is a high confidential file or if it is for a general consumption, it get unprotected. Once you share the data with someone via USB or email, it get protected and encrypted with Azure cloud key or your own key and after that you can see globally who is accessing the file when were granted or denied finally you can revoke the access of the file and that ends the life cycle of the data as your information protection is a part of microsoft suite products it has some tight integration with uh, other products like uh, exchange online sharepoint and uh, onedrive so, and also Microsoft Office applications are also integrated with the Azure Information Protection. So you can install a plugin like Azure Information Protection. Once you install Azure Information Protection client, then a plugin will be added to uh, your application in MS Office so that the labels can be applied and protected uh, from MS Office applications. Uh, so those documents created by the application get labeled and classified and protected. Uh, that integration will help you to operate Azure Information Protection seamlessly. Now finally, in order to complete Azure Information Protection, it has some dependencies uh, with other Microsoft Azure services and one of it is Azure Active Directory. And also you need a as Azure Tenant and you need a subscription or uh, like Office 365 subscription which include Azure Information Protection or you need to subscribe separately for as your information protection. In the coming videos, we're going to see how to set up labels and policies and how to protect the files uh, with Azure information protection, how to revoke the files and how to see who are all access to these files. And also we will continue with the on-prem scanner for Azure information protection and at the end we will see how to implement log analytics also. So stay tuned with us, subscribe our YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you very much.